The year was 1967, and the air in Harrogate was thick with the scent of blooming flowers and the distant hum of a society in transition. But for Richard, the charm of the town felt like a suffocating shroud. He'd recently moved from London, seeking solace and escape from a life that had become overwhelmingly mundane and disconcertingly meaningless. Richard sat in a small cafe on the edge of Harrogate, staring into his coffee as if it held the answers to the questions that plagued his mind. The world around him seemed vibrant and alive, yet he felt an acute sense of detachment, as though he were merely an observer of a play that held no interest for him. Days in Harrogate passed slowly, each one a mirror image of the last. Richard wandered the streets aimlessly, visiting the same shops, the same parks, and the same quiet corners. He had left behind the bustling chaos of London, but instead of finding peace, he was confronted with an overwhelming sense of nausea, a profound disgust and disillusionment with his own existence. One evening, as he sat on a bench in the valley gardens, watching children play and couples stroll hand in hand, the weight of his solitude pressed down on him. He was struck by the absurdity of it all, the mechanical nature of human routines, the pointless interactions, and the relentless passage of time. He felt trapped in a reality that was both familiar and foreign, a prisoner of his own consciousness. Richard's thoughts often wandered back to London, to the life he had tried to leave behind. He recalled the bustling streets of Soho, the lively pubs and the ever-present noise that filled the air. But even there, amidst the cacophony, he had felt this same emptiness. The change of scenery had not alleviated the gnawing sense of futility that had taken root in his soul. In Harrogate, the stillness amplified his inner turmoil. The picturesque town, with its neatly manicured gardens and quaint architecture, seemed to mock his discontent. He found himself grappling with the fundamental questions of existence. Why am I here? What is the purpose of life? Is there any meaning to be found? Or is it all an illusion? One rainy afternoon, as he wandered through the deserted streets, Richard found himself in front of an old bookshop. He stepped inside, seeking refuge from the storm, and began to browse the shelves aimlessly. His fingers traced the spines of books filled with the thoughts and musings of others who had wrestled with the same existential dilemmas. He picked up a worn copy of Sartre's Nausea and began to read feeling an uncanny resonance with the protagonist's journey. The bookshop owner, an elderly man with a kind face, approached Richard and struck up a conversation. They spoke of literature, philosophy, and the human condition. The old man's insights provided a brief respite from Richard's despair, yet the underlying nausea remained lurking just beneath the surface. As the weeks turned into months, Richard continued his search for meaning in the quiet corners of Harrogate. He frequented the bookshop, attended local lectures, and engaged in conversations with strangers, all in a futile attempt to quell the growing sense of dread that consumed him, but no matter how hard he tried, he could not escape the crushing realization that life, in its essence, was absurd. One day, while sitting on a hill overlooking the town, Richard experienced a moment of clarity. He realized that the nausea he felt was not a sign of weakness or failure, but a fundamental aspect of the human condition. It was the awareness of his own existence, the acute consciousness of being that caused his discomfort. He understood that meaning was not something to be found, but something to be created moment by moment through the choices he made. With this newfound understanding, Richard rose from the bench and walked back towards the town. The nausea had not disappeared, but it had transformed. It was no longer a crippling force, but a reminder of his own freedom 
and the infinite possibilities that lay before him. He would continue to grapple with the absurdity of life, but he would do so with a sense of purpose and determination, forging his own path in a world that often seemed devoid of meaning. In the years that followed, Richard's life in Harrogate took on a new dimension. He became an active member of the community, immersing himself in projects and causes that resonated with his values. The existential angst remained, but it was tempered by a sense of agency and self-creation. Richard had learned to navigate the complexities of existence, finding moments of beauty and meaning in the midst of the absurd. And though the nausea never fully subsided, it became a constant companion, a testament to his enduring quest for understanding and fulfillment.